So I think in the instance of Polymateria, where we have developed a, a very deep tech solution to plastic pollution, the ability for academia to validate the claims that a company like ours would be making from a marketing perspective becomes incredibly important. That can't just be designed into your way of innovating as an afterthought, where you go away from an R&D perspective, you come up with a new a solution, a new capability, and then expect academia to be bought into the solution afterwards. You have to draw them in at the very start. You have to work with, in a lot of instances, PhDs who have very um, discrete focuses and bring their focus, if you want, in a, into alignment with the mission of your company and then work together over the course of delivering the project so that you're both better off from having shared each other's experiences. If you do that in an authentic and in a meaningful way, what ultimately starts to happen with a deep technology like ours, which can be very difficult um, for even technical audiences to understand, you then have a lot of academic partners who will be able to validate the claims that you're making, and they will ultimately be part of the advocacy uh, for the technology, which increasingly these days, um, customers, but also government policy and um, NGOs and so on, are looking for that validation to know that you are a credible business. So I think the key word there is acceleration. When you have um, become a disruptive business purely because you've created a technology that is disruptive and you work within a value chain that has done things in a certain way, probably learn behaviors over a hundred year time frame. You can't just work across the value chain. You also have to work beyond the value chain. So working with NGOs, particularly in our case, recycling NGOs and standards bodies who are not typically people that you would engage as part of your sales cycle, but they become incredibly important so that whatever claims you're making can be enshrined in the standards that the standards bodies are setting, but also that uh, recycling NGOs are able to give confidence to the industry that your technology can be deployed in a way that doesn't impact on the circular economy. So as a small organization, building that degree of collaboration into your culture and in how you approach the market is incredibly important. And from an acceleration perspective, you can't allow the industry to dictate the long period of time that it usually takes to bring new technology to market. So you have to become specialists in drawing people together, pulling them into very concentrated environments where the different capabilities can all have an opportunity to listen to each other. So something that might take 18 months from a sequential perspective, you can work through and get to a conclusion a lot quicker um, over a, a course of a couple of weeks um, as opposed to uh, taking a very, very long time frame. And I also think that's appropriate because on something like plastic pollution, which is where our business is focused, it truly is a global emergency. So you can't treat it like you are going to do things from a business as usual perspective. You have to do things in a disruptive way. And that's all about pulling together these unlikely stakeholders and forcing those conversations to happen that usually happen in a long sequence and making them happen in an afternoon. <laughs>